Hey, my name is Will. Did you ever have a game that you never managed to finish for whatever reason? In this video, I'm going to tackle one of my gaming white whales. It's a game that I owned on the NES but was never able to finish because of how difficult the game was for me as a kid. I'm going to be playing through and finally finishing Air Fortress for the NES. So yeah, kick back, relax, and let me talk about finally finishing a game that I was never able to beat as a kid. So Air Fortress was a game that was released for the NES in the West in 1989. It was developed by HAL Laboratory, the developer that's best known for making the Kirby and Super Smash Bros. games. I would describe the game as a mix of shoot 'em up and basic map crawling gameplay. It's a pretty cool mix. So I'm not going to delve into the game's story too much as the game isn't really story driven. But the gist of it is, you're playing as a guy called Hal Bailman, and your mission is to take out these fortresses which are threatening the galaxy because they drain and consume the resources of anything in their path. The gameplay loop is stage-based, and each stage is divided into two sections. A shmup section and a fortress section. In the shmup section, you destroy enemies, avoid obstacles, and collect bombs and energy pickups. The bomb and energy pickups have no effect on this section of the game, but rather form your resources for the fortress sections. Once you clear the shmup section, you land your ship and enter the fortress section of the stage. So the more energy and bombs you picked up beforehand, the better equipped you are for the fortress section. Your goal in the fortress is to try and find the core of the fortress and blow it up. The gameplay reminds me a little bit of Metroid, albeit not nearly as detailed. Once you locate the core, you use your bombs to destroy it. Then you must find your ship to escape the fortress before it explodes. So Air Fortress was one of the few NES games we owned. As a kid, it would be the game that I would play every now and then to make another attempt at beating it. The game shows there are 8 fortresses to get through, and I think I would make it to about Fortress 6 before the game became too hard for me. Between the difficult enemies and just not being able to find my ship in time before the fortress blew up, Stage 6 was the brick wall that I hit and could not overcome. The escape sequence from this game is a core memory for me, so when the fortress core gets destroyed, the power cuts out and some eerie music plays. Initially it doesn't seem like there's much of a sense of urgency. But then the screen starts shaking and that's when things become a bit more tense. The thing that I think was cool about this game was that the escape sequences didn't have a countdown to doom. It made the experience extra tense for me as a kid, because the only point of reference I had to how much time was left was the environment. As time begins to run out, the screen starts shaking even more violently before the explosion happens. So in the later fortresses, I just remember being stressed out trying to find the exit, the whole time thinking, Oh man, I don't think I'm gonna make it. It's a small detail, but it's something that has made me think about the game from time to time over the years. Also, now that I think about it, I think it's the escape sequences from Air Fortress that really made me enjoy and appreciate the Metroid games that I played later on. The finale in Metroid games generally involve having to escape the planet before it blows up. So finishing a Metroid game felt extra good because in some ways it would make me think back to Air Fortress and be like, yeah, I'm good at escaping stuff. All right, well, let's get to it. It's time to finally beat Air Fortress. The first stage is a bit of an introduction. The opening section is straightforward, so you get used to collecting power-ups. The fortress is a simple linear path that you follow until you get to the core, blow it up, and then just hop in your ship, which is located directly in front of the core. Nice and convenient. The stage let me get reacquainted with the controls as it had been a very long time since I last played the game. The second stage, again, pretty straightforward. The outdoor section is just a casual stroll to the end, and the fortress begins with a room with spikes that you need to use your boost to navigate through and take out enemies along the way. The stage also introduces these blocks that pull you downwards towards danger, but it's not really too bad right now. So you just continue down the linear route, taking out enemies, including these things that shoot back at you if you shoot at them. With these, you just take them out with a bomb, unless you're really good at dodging. This fortress has one branching path to serve as an introduction to let you know that escape might not be so simple. After destroying the core, unlike before, your ship isn't nearby. You must continue further until you find the tube that warps you to an unfamiliar part of the fortress. It can be a little disorienting given there's no map in the game, but all you need to do is realize that this is the same corridor from before and just take the opposite turn at the fork. So not too bad. On to Fortress 3. The outdoor section introduces more enemies and is starting to become a bit more tricky. 
I don't really talk about these sections much because there isn't really a lot to them. You just collect energy and bombs where possible and hope that RNG gives you some bonus ones along the way. The one thing I'll say about the game that I feel like could have used more fleshing out is the shmup sections, as there isn't really a lot of depth to the gameplay here. You just sort of get through them. There aren't any upgrades for your ship and there isn't really a big boss at the end of the area to deal with either. So there isn't really much I can point out here other than, oh hey, it's a yellow stage now and now there's one more enemy type that dies in one hit. I'll point out some of the larger changes later, but for now let's just jump to the fortress. So the third fortress is that point in time where I think the game begins to ramp up in difficulty. Immediately from the first room you have enemies shooting at you. Also there are new enemies that you need to be careful with or they will eat a large chunk of your energy up. Compared to the earlier fortresses, this one's just full of enemies constantly shooting at you, and more often than not it's better to just keep moving instead of attempting to clear everything out. Sometimes enemies do drop energy or bombs upon death, but it doesn't happen very often and so it doesn't give you much incentive to stick around. There are also certain enemies where it's just better to take them out with a bomb, but since bombs are limited and important, I only take them out when they're really being a nuisance. The path in this fortress is again pretty linear with very simple branching paths. Once the core is destroyed, you follow the path, go up a tube, the tube places you back at the start of the left path, and you just simply follow the right hand side, avoid some space moths, and just continue onwards to your ship. Up until this point I was feeling pretty confident. It seems my memories of the game were still intact, and I wasn't really struggling with anything yet. Maybe this whole playthrough is going to be a case of childhood memories building this up and making the game seem more difficult than it actually was. Anyway, another outdoor section and the fourth fortress begins. As soon as I entered the fortress, I had a moment where things felt really familiar. I knew that this would be the last fortress where things would be straightforward. See, up until this point, I was doing pretty well. Sure, some of the fortresses had branching paths, but for the most part, it was usually just a coin flip, so it didn't involve any trial and error. In this fortress, there are numerous paths you can take, and some of the rooms start looking the same. Also, this fortress sees the introduction of the game's most difficult enemies, the robots. These things will be the bane of your existence in this game. They have really quick reaction speeds and will chase you to the ends of the earth, even if you are off screen. These things hit like a truck and shoot pretty rapidly, so you can't afford to take much damage from them. And these are only the basic variant, as there are stronger ones that appear later. So in this fortress, I did eat a game over, trying to find the core and then the escape route. My memory was fuzzy on the details, but I did piece it together eventually. Okay, I'm not going to give you a play-by-play -play on all of the fortresses, but I want to give you an idea of how tricky things are going to become. So at the start, go all the way to the bottom and head left. Take out the enemies here because you're gonna come back here later. Then go back to the elevator, head up one floor and go all the way to the left. Take the elevator to the top, then head right, go up the tube, take out the core, go back up the tube. You will now be back at the first room, which we cleared. Head to the elevator on the right, head up one floor again, head left to the end of the room, go down two rooms, head to the right, avoid the robot, keep calm, follow the path, and hey, there's the ship. Alright, all done. To get to the point of knowing the way out of this fortress, I would have gone down every wrong turn, failed multiple times, until I memorized the escape route. This is what these later fortresses are going to become now. Trial and error. The outdoor section of the fifth fortress mixes things up a bit by introducing the game's only boss-like enemy. It's a big ship that takes multiple hits to take out. Or you can just sit in a safe zone and wait for it to go off screen. The choice is yours. I remember this fortress being really difficult to get through because of the enemies. There's just so many things that shoot at you and there are multiple rooms with robots. These robots would deplete a lot of my energy leaving very little for exploration, let alone escape. So my memory with this fortress was really fuzzy, but I knew we were approaching the end of what I was able to complete as a child. The big ship in the opening section of the stage was the sign that things were going to become difficult. Again, I did eat a game over, but surprisingly got through the fortress faster than I thought I would. The pain was finding out where the ship and core were, but once I did, I saw that the two weren't really that far apart from one another. Since I had taken out most of the enemies along the way, the escape wasn't too bad. It was just the journey that was difficult. Okay, Fortress 6, another shmup section with a big ship, and we enter the fortress. I imagine this is going to be very, very difficult. Oh yeah, no, yep, already I hate it. Yep. Robot right away. 
this doesn't bode well. The fortress immediately branches out from the get-go, and so begins the painstaking process of figuring out the correct path. This was definitely the fortress I was never able to finish as a kid. Between the branching paths, very similar looking rooms, and sometimes unfair enemy placements. This was just something I couldn't get past as a kid. Like take this room for example. Multiple enemies on the way down, spikes to avoid, and oh yeah, a robot guarding the pipe who will most likely land a few hits on you. Every room was just slowly chipping away at my energy as I was trying to figure out what the routes to the core and the ships were. After a few deaths and about 40 minutes of exploration, I finally found where the ship was located. Though I didn't live much longer to be able to do anything else. Another 40 minutes and two attempts later, I finally made my way to the core. But thanks to all the trial and error, I had basically no health left and ended up being destroyed by a robot on the way out. The next attempt I was able to have a lot more health by the time I got up to the core, so this time I was confident I could find my way to the escape. Things felt super tense as the background began to shake and my energy was getting lower and lower, but finally I made it to the escape room. Dude, let, let me through. Oh my god, this room. No! Yeah. So for the next attempt, I went to the escape room, took out those enemies first, ran through the whole thing again, and finally managed to escape and beat the fortress I was never able to beat as a kid. So from this point on, this was all uncharted territory for me. The outdoor segment to Fortress 7 wasn't too bad. There wasn't really anything overly tricky, so I was kind of surprised that the difficulty didn't ramp up. If anything, it was slightly easier than the previous fortress. With this fortress, I started with over 3000 energy, so I knew I was in for a long exploration session. This fortress has a lot of long vertical areas and is just riddled with enemies that will slowly drain your energy down. Oh, and plenty of these robots as well, can't forget about them. The thing about this fortress is that there are a lot of rooms that look very similar, so it's easy to get lost in the maze. So yeah, I don't think I would have had any chance of passing this point as a kid, even if I got up to it. Surprisingly though, on my first attempt, I did manage to find my way to the core, albeit on really low energy. I had no clue where I was going during the escape sequence, so I was desperately trying to find the escape in the little time I had. Unfortunately, I ended up dying thanks to these things. But for a first attempt, I got a lot further than I thought I would. On the second attempt, I had more energy and a better idea of where not to go. And wouldn't you know it, I was right next to the escape on the last run. And with that, it was on to Fortress 8. I was really excited at this point, as this was something I wanted to do as a kid and never could. The outdoor section for Fortress 8 stocks you up on a lot of energy and bombs, so I was mentally preparing myself for a lengthy exploration process. In this outdoor section, enemies are being thrown at you constantly with very few moments of rest. But again, it's all pretty straightforward, just dodge and shoot. And here we are, Fortress 8 with over 3,500 energy. The final fortress is a massive labyrinth with long hallways and shafts. Every room had enemies that just chipped away at the energy I had, and of course the robots made plenty of appearances along the way. The first run was just a lot of trial and error and trying to make sense of the fortress layout. There are a lot of pipes that teleport you to another part of the map that has rooms that look very similar to the other parts of the fortress. The thing that worried me the most was that the fortress had a central section that was skipped by the elevators, so I figured at some point I'd have to navigate my way there. One thing about this game that I am thankful for is, for the most part, once enemies are dead, they remain dead, with the exception of certain rooms that have robots. I explored so many rooms on this first run, and most of them ended up with me being teleported back to the start and having to find my way back to where I was again. Eventually, with less than a thousand energy, I did manage to find my way to a new series of paths. So by the looks of it, the fortress was divided into two major sections. After a bit of exploration in this second part of the fortress, I ended up finding the escape room and a new giant tank enemy, which thankfully I didn't have to deal with yet. But yeah, that's all I managed to get done as I ended up meeting my end to a robot that was just camping the door I needed to go through. Yeah, that happens a lot in this game. Attempt 2, and this time I have over 4,000 energy to try and figure this out. I was feeling a little more confident as that was a significant increase over the previous attempt. And this time, I knew at least how to get to the second part of the fortress. One thing I figured out as a little bit of a cheese tactic 
is that you can take out these enemies by approaching them slowly and letting them be halfway on the screen so you can shoot them without any retaliation. So this definitely helped in making sure my energy wasn't dropping too rapidly as I explored. As I explored the second half of the fortress, I was leaving myself breadcrumbs by taking out these box-shaped enemies. That way, if I went through a warp pipe, I would at least know that I had been there before. Eventually I did find myself in a room with the new tank enemy and immediately figured out a way to cheese it. Again, it just involves having it on the edge of the screen. Also, above me were multiple robots and a new UFO enemy, which I was not looking forward to as I could only assume the escape route would involve the upper path. Energy was starting to run low and it didn't seem like I was anywhere near finding the core. Every path I went down just led to a new branch and another choice. Eventually I met my end to a UFO, but at least now I had a better idea of where to go and hopefully it was going to be a case of third time's the charm. So it turns out I wasn't far from the core on the previous attempt. Right after where I died, there is a pipe that leads to one long vertical chamber full of robots that has the core at the very top. The annoying thing about this room is this is one of the cases in the game where enemies respawn. So several times I accidentally respawned the robot I had just taken out. And yeah, I ended up dying here. But at least now I had full knowledge of where to go. I would love to say that on the next attempt I ended up getting to the escape, but it took a couple of attempts to get there because of this robot room. Seriously, there's like eight of them to deal with in this room, and one wrong move and they just delete you. Anyway, I finally make it up to the big escape sequence and things were super tense. I had to deal with the big tank, so I had no more bombs left. It meant that if any robots were in my path, there was no chance I'd make it out. And yep, that's exactly what happened. The UFO and robot room took me out. The next few attempts went the same way. I had just taken so much damage and didn't have many bombs left that survival in the escape was rough. It was also getting really late, so I decided to call it a night and try it again the next day. Overnight I gave it some thought and decided that I would try a new path during the escape sequence as I had been trying the same thing over and over again, but getting nowhere. So when the time came, during the escape sequence, I tried a different path. At first I immediately regretted my decision because it seemed to be throwing me down a vertical path with the robots and my energy was running low. But then shortly after, I saw that it led to a familiar corridor. And sure enough, there was the escape right ahead. Oh my god. No! Oh, come on! You gotta be kidding! Oh, you got to be kidding! Okay, I now have my escape path. This is the run. I can feel it. The next run, I made it to the escape sequence with a lot of health. All that was needed now was to get to the ship as quick as possible. Don't care, just go. Oh, got it! And there it was! I had finally finished Air Fortress. Or so I thought. In the child happy. Alright, well that's Air Fortress. Attention, the fortress recovered its function, it became more destructive, and is attacking the planet Farmill. Now Hal Bailman, it is time to show your real power. You shall destroy the Air Fortress completely. What do you mean? Oh, you've got to be kidding. Uh... Yep. So, it turns out Air Fortress is one of those games. See, older games tended to have a new game plus mode to add some replay value. Some of these games did it through a whole new second quest, like the original Legend of Zelda, and other games decided to just lump it in with the main game and basically tell you, lol, JK, do it all again, for real this time. Air Fortress fits into the latter group. Okay, so the main thing for the outdoor sections is that the color palettes are different, but outside of that, the difficulty level is more or less the same. There aren't any new mechanics or new enemies, just shoot, get pickups, survive. The fortresses are a little bit of a different story. The first few fortresses are more or less the same map, but with a lot more enemies and the robots are present even earlier than before. Again, it all felt familiar, so I was confident that I could get through it pretty easily. But then, once again, the fifth fortress was where things started to get tricky. The later fortresses, though they have a familiar layout, the path you take to find the ship has been mixed up 
and so the knowledge of the original fortress more often than not leads you astray, and the barrage of enemies just drain your energy until you have no chance of surviving. But thankfully, the answer to the new path was usually just taking the opposite direction at the fork in the road, except for a couple of cases where it was a little bit of trial and error. It wasn't too long before I was up to the final fortress again, and was once again faced with the task of unraveling the maze. Again, the map looked familiar, and for the most part, getting through the various sections was thankfully more or less the same. But the issue came down to survival. This version of the fortress goes crazy with the robot placements, and there are so many rooms where they are just there, ready to drain your health. Like this room. This room sucked. Once again, I figured out where the core and the escape routes were, but it came down to just not having enough energy to escape. Also, the escape route is just plagued with robots, so there was that to deal with. It seemed like a pretty rough task, but after about 40 minutes of attempts, I finally did it. No bombs left. Just go. There's another robot. Oh god. Uh, oh! I'm still alive. Oh my god. Let's go! I can't believe I survived that. Alright, I'm done. That's it. Oh, I can't believe I survived that. Air Fortress was a game that, as a kid, felt like it was impossible to finish. And I can see why. There are things about it in terms of difficulty that just put it out of reach for me as a kid. And yep, it's pretty much because of these f***ers. But yeah, I'm really glad that I finally got to complete the game. So I hope this video got you thinking about the games that you couldn't finish and maybe giving them another go. Let me know what your gaming white whales are in the comments, and also if you enjoyed the video, as it'll let me know to keep doing more. But in the meantime, if you want to support the channel, the easiest way to do so is to hit that old like button. Or, if you want to see me play games in full, be sure to check out my stream archive channel. I'm also live on Twitch most nights Australian time if you ever want to catch me live. Anyway, that's it from me. If you want to see me talk more about the games I play, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. Until next time, thanks for watching.